you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Hollywood Star Time. Each Sunday at this time, Frigidaire brings you radio versions of the finest motion pictures. Bell for Adano, Song of Bernadette, Laura, with such great stars as Alice Faye, Dana Andrews, Betty Grable, Charles Boyer, and many, many others. Today you will hear the immortal love story, Seventh Heaven, which was originally presented on Broadway by John Golden, later to be twice produced as motion pictures by 20th Century Fox, who also are producers of the Technicolor production, Lever to Heaven, starring Gene Tierney, Cornell Wilde, and Gene Crane. Today, Bridget Eyre presents Seventh Heaven with Gene Crane and that distinguished star who is making his first radio appearance since being released from the Marine Corps, Tyrone Power. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire, the greatest name in refrigeration, is made only by General Motors. And it's this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator today. The seven million Frigidaires built and sold are the best proof of Frigidaire's outstanding record of dependability of lasting satisfaction. For back of every great refrigeration principle pioneered by Frigidaire, back of every exciting new Frigidaire feature, back of every exclusive Frigidaire advantage, is one all-important purpose. To keep food good to eat. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember the record of millions of Frigidaires in millions of American kitchens. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. Now, Seventh Heaven with Tyrone Power and Gene Crane. <laughs> I'm Commissioner of Sanitation, Paris, France, which gives me some authority to tell the story of Chico, the young sewer cleaner, and Diane. Although this is today, 1946, and that was back there in 1914. Diane worked in her sister Nana's ugly cafe in the Momart, and Diane was having a very bad time of it that summer's evening. Chico, hearing a commotion on the sidewalk above his sewer, emerged from the manhole to discover Nana beating Diane unmercifully. First, he disposed furiously of Nana, only to find himself of Diane somewhat upon his unwilling hands. And Boole, the taxi driver, was no help. You know who this woman is, Boole? Only that she works in Nana's place. <laughs> that fine place. Hey, you, girl, why was that woman beating you? I threw wine in the face of her best customer. You will close the place up. Well, next time she beats you, tell her not to make it so public. It disturbs me at my trade. Boole, have you bought me some supper? Sausage and cheese and an onion. Ah, mademoiselle. Mademoiselle? No. No, oh, why don't you get up and go home? Let the girl alone, Chico. You practically save her life and then badger her to death. Your knife, please. Uh, careful with it. As for you, mademoiselle, you can't lie in the gutter there and spoil our supper. You're not dead. You're not dead unless you think you're dead. Then you are dead. A profound thought. Of course. Because I'm a very remarkable fellow. Yes. And I'll, uh, I'll trouble you for my knife. I laid it down on the... I put it... Chico! Look! Take it from her! Here, here. Stop that. Let, let me alone. No, you don't. Not with my knife. Oh, oh, why didn't you let me do it? Why didn't you let me kill my, myself? Oh, not with my knife. I'll go to the river. Well, that's another matter. The river doesn't belong to me. Easy. Easy on the girl, Chico. Try to act respectable. Here comes Father Chevillon. Citizen or Monsieur Chevillon to an atheist like me. Shh. Some people told me a girl was being beaten by... Oh, my poor child. Oh, she's all right. Only because Chico saved her, Father Chevillon. Indeed? And why, may I ask? 
I can't quite connect Chico's kindness with his uh, often declared atheism. Besides, Chico, why exactly are you an atheist? I'll tell you why. I gave God a perfectly fair chance. I paid six francs at the cathedral for the biggest candle they had. I pray to God to make me a street washer instead of just a sewer cleaner. I'm still a sewer cleaner. Chico, your prayer has been answered. Huh? Now, if you will take this card to the Commissioner of Sanitation... So... Here. You will be a street washer tomorrow. No. Yes. Well, that, that doesn't change me. I'm still an atheist. You see, Father, he paid another six francs to pray for a beautiful wife as remarkable as he is. But no results as yet. God owes me 12 francs. Well, uh, I think I can balance that account. <laughs> Here, take these, my son. Two medals of St. Agnes and St. John on silver chains. Worth exactly 12 francs. And they will protect you from danger. Goodbye, my former atheist. Former atheist. Will you be all right, my daughter? Yes, Father. Good night, Boole. Good night, Father. Chico, read the card he gave you. Oh, yes. Uh, my dear Commissioner, as a particular favor to me, I request that the bearer of this note... Boo! I'm a street washer. I have risen. A celebration, perhaps. At your expense. A celebration, yes. Come on. Well, what about the girl? Her? Oh, let her go to the river if she likes. Come, a celebration. We'll go to Jacques' Café. There, the wine is better. The music gayer. Come on, boo. <laughs> So the girl went her way, Chico and Boole went theirs. But presently, Chico stopped babbling about his new job and walked more and more slowly until he stopped and left Boole and went calling through the dark alleys and streets of the MoMA, looking for the lonely, unhappy girl, walking faster, breaking into a run, darting from door to door, alley to alley, looking, 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 and at last, finding her under a dim lamp near the embankment of the River Seine. Look here. Where do you really think you're going? To the river, which does not belong to you. But why do you want to take your life? I've had enough of it. Why did you run away from Nana's place? I hate it there. Well, then if you hate it, you can't be really bad. Please, don't say things you don't mean. But I do mean it. The police, they came to close my sister's cafe. Let me go. No, no, no. Never run away. Courage. One moment there. You work at Nana's. No, I didn't ask you. I volunteered. She's one of those girls from the cafe. No, she isn't because... Well, because she happens to be my wife. Eh? Where do you live? 48 Rue Notre-Dame de Lorette. You'd better be telling the truth, because I won't forget to come around and check up on your story. Good night. <laughs> All right, drive on. Now, why did I ever do that? Oh, don't worry. I'll go away. But they'll come to my address and find I'm not married. I'll lose my fine new job. Uh, what luck. Perhaps if you could let me stay until the police came, then I would go away. Stay until the police... Say, now, that's an idea, that. You've got a great little head. Oh, and you... You have a great heart. No, but I, I will say that I'm a very remar... Oh, come on. <laughs> seven flights of stairs up to Chico's dwelling under the very roof. As they climbed once, the weary, broken Diane stumbled and almost fell on the worn steps. Oh. Shall I carry you? No. I only stumbled. I'm all right. You know, there's, uh, there's something about you that gives me a little hope for you. You know, two more flights. Well, come. And at length, they came to Chico's garret. But with Chico in it, it was not a garret at all, but a place where a king came to be away from care and statecraft. And here, Chico brought Diane that summer's night in 1914. Oh, Chico. Well, don't you like it? Like it? This is heaven. You're not taking this too seriously. Oh, no. I only brought you here because I had to. Tomorrow, or anyhow, the next day, the police will come. Then you can leave. 
I know. Well, all right, then. Look, uh, you can see Sacre Coeur Church from my window here. Oh, yes, only... What is this plank across the alley? Oh, that. That's how Aristide and I visit each other. Across that narrow plank? Seven floors above the street? Now, you're not going to be afraid of that now. Never be afraid. Oh, I would fall. I don't. Aristide doesn't. Aristide reads the stars and lives across the alley with his cats. A very good friend who minds my business very well. Oh. Well, that's your bed. I'll spend the night with Aristide and his cats. Good night. I go out through the window here and over the plank. Good night, Chico. Yes? Who is it? Over. Police. Oh. I said I would come. Oh, so soon? Where is your husband? Oh, he's been at work all day. A new job. I should like to look around. Mm. Uh-huh. Oh, what's this? You're cooking a stew? Yes, a stew. Very safely. Very domestic. Yes, I think that will be quite enough. I won't trouble you again. Madame Chico, good evening. Oh, why did it have to be so soon? No. No one came. Chico will ask, but I will say no one. Diane. Oh. I am Aristide, a very good friend of Chico. He told me, across the plank. Out of the kindness of his heart, Chico's let you stay until the police came. You promised not to take advantage. I haven't. When do you suppose the police will come? I don't know. Perhaps you hope they won't come at all. No, please. Or perhaps they've already been here. How did you know? It doesn't matter. What matters now is that you want to bind yourself to him. Rob him of the greatness that he might have known. All right. All right. I'll go. I'll go. few moments, Frigid Air will bring you the second act of Seventh Heaven, starring Tyrone Power and Gene Crane. Seven million Frigid Airs built and sold. Millions of these Frigid Air refrigerators are still serving dependably, faithfully, in so many useful ways. That's because dependability and usefulness are built into Frigid Air refrigerators right from the start. Take the meter miser, for example. Frigid Air engineers set out to design a cold-making mechanism that would do away with oiling, belts, and pulleys, and noise. One that would make oceans of cold on a mere trickle of current. So they built a powerful little compressor that had only two simple parts that move. Because when parts aren't there, they can't cause trouble or wear. Then they built a compact motor and made it a part of the compressor. Then they sealed the whole thing in oil in a single housing no bigger than a derby hat. The result was the meter miser, the simplest refrigerating mechanism ever built. And you know, it's the mechanism that really counts in a refrigerator. So keep in mind the engineering skill at Frigid Air that has worked constantly to make better products for more people for less money. Remember this when you choose your next refrigerator. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigid Air is made only by General Motors. We continue with the presentation of Seventh Heaven, starring Tyrone Power and Gene Crane, who is currently appearing with Gene Tierney and Cornell Wilde in the 20th Century Fox Technicolor production of Lever to Heaven. Now for Act Two, 
of Seventh Heaven. Chico came home for a celebration over his first day's success in his new job, only to find Diane gone, driven away by his good friend Aristide. The police came. There was no further reason for her to stay. Where did she go? Where would she be likely to go? Back to Nana's cafe where she came from. You would never believe how fierce and terrible Chico could be as he trapped Diane at a corner table to scold her bitterly for leaving him. And you'd never believe how tender Chico could be. As a few moments later, Diane stumbled up the steps of Seventh Heaven again. And Chico took her in his arms. Diane's wet cheek was against his. As this time, he carried her to his kingly citadel. Adoration in her eyes. And this was a night in August, 1914. Army to the sea. Army of the land. Army to the sea. Army of the sea. Mobilization. Mobilization. Really to be war? Oh, Goban and Boole have their orders to report. Not I. I suppose they aren't going to take any chances losing a great street washer like me in their silly war. I, uh, I brought you a package. Here, uh, open it. What is it? Oh, open it. It, uh, well, it's a, it's a wedding dress. Chico, do you really want to marry me? Yes. Why? Well, because when I sleep in Aristide's flat, his cats walk on my face. Oh, Chico, you're so strange. You're not like anyone. Well, that's true. I, I'm a very remarkable fellow. Say something. Say what? One word of love. To tell me you're not marrying me out of pity. You, you mean you want me to make love to you? Oh, yes. Well, just this once, though. No more. Come here. Yes? Well, I, I don't know. It's uh, It's like this. There's me, Chico, and there's you, Diane. And all this here, it's... It's heaven. Chico, Diane, heaven. Oh, say it again. Chico, Diane. Oh, Diane, listen to me. I love you. Oh, say it again. I love you. Oh, at last, Chico... You said it all by yourself. Oh, Diane. Hold me closer. Closer. Chico. Diane. Heaven. Naturally enough, in 1914, it was a letter from the war office. And because he taught her so well, Diane could smile and be strong while the armies of France waited for Chico. I'll never be afraid, Chico. I'll be beautiful for you and wise for you. I astonish myself with what I am. Oh, I, too, am a very remarkable fellow. I report in an hour. But first I must know that you're my wife. Diane, do you believe in God? Yes. Since he brought you to me. Look... Father Chevillon gave me these two medals. Uh, here, hold my hand. Dear God, perhaps you're with us. Perhaps you're not. Perhaps you give me this wife. Perhaps not. But if there's any truth in the idea of you, please, make this a true marriage. Wear this medal around your neck, Diane. I take you, Diane, for my wife. Put the other medal around my neck. Yes. Now. I take Chico for my husband. Forever. Eleven o'clock. Diane, every morning at eleven o'clock, I'll come to you. Every day at this moment, you'll feel me with you. I promise it. Promise it. Are you young? Well, then, 
somewhat before your time, battles were fought by the names of towns and rivers and hills, not by the names of nations or continents. The Marne, the Aisne, the Vimy Ridge, Cambrai, the Americans came. Europe was won and lost and won again, and nothing had been gained. But always, always in the muck and misery of World War I, it would always, somehow, get to be 11 o'clock in the morning. Chico, Diane, Heaven. Chico, Diane, Heaven. Until one evil day in a captured German dugout, boo, Chico's old taxi driving friend had a complaint about the war. You know, Chico, what I do not admire about this dugout? Oh, the plush is not silver and gold. Now the rats are deserting the dugout. I'm not worried about the loss of your friends. Yeah, I think I'll go outside and look around. Besides, it's 11 o'clock, Chico. Oh, thank you, Bull, good friend. Chico. Diane. Heaven. Chico. Diane. Heaven. Chico! Your gas mask! Gas attack! Chico! Chico! Chico, where are you? Chico, I heard you and then... Chico! What happened? Courage, my son. The doctors here are excellent. They... Chico. Who was that? Father Cheviot. What happened? Gas. High explosive. My eyes. Everything. Father, give this medal to Diane. No, Chico. You're going to live for Diane. No, Father. I know. Tell her that although I was blind, I died looking up. The war was over. Already some of the men were coming home, were marching in the streets. And Diane, her first panic gone, still waited for Chico to return with the others. Still fell on her knees at 11 every morning and heard Chico come to her. It was Father Chevillon, just home from the front, who finally told her the unhappy news on the very morning of victory and peace. Oh, but Father, you must be wrong. Ever since the day a few weeks ago when his voice broke off, he's been with me stronger and clearer than ever. You must be wrong. No, Diane. Oh, Chico dead. He gave me this medal to give to you. Were you with him when... No. But I know he died at peace with God. Oh, I was so sure. I thought God was helping us. Chico, Diane, heaven... What childish nonsense. Now he's dead. Chico. Diane. Heaven. Chico. Diane. Heaven. Chico. Chico! Diane. Heaven. He's alive, Father. Chico is alive. My child. He's alive and near me. And I'm going home to wait for him. Come to me, Diane. Oh, Chico, can't you see me? Just a little. I have you in my eyes. The way you were when I went away. That's all I need. Remember, I... I told you never be afraid. Oh, they tried to make me believe you were dead, but they couldn't. 
they couldn't. Naturally not. I'll never die. And you came to me every day at 11. Just as I promised. And God was with us, wasn't he? Every day. Every moment. And I'm going to be able to see, too. And I'm going to amount to something. They can't keep me down because I... I tell you, uh, I'm a very remarkable fellow. Oh, yes. We're both very remarkable fellows. Much has happened since Armistice Day of 1918. Peace and war again. And I must say this for Chico. He lived up to his promise to Diane, being indeed a very remarkable fellow. He became commissioner of sanitation. Ah, but you'll argue, you told us you were commissioner of sanitation. <laughs> well, so I am. But this is 1946, and Diane and I are a bit older. Yes, you guessed it. I am Chico. And I, I must say, although I blush to say it, I still am a very remarkable fellow. <laughs> Thanks to Tyrone Power and Gene Crane for a great performance. In just a moment, they'll both be back. Hollywood Star Time is presented each Sunday at this time with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire home appliances. Electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Remember, Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. And here are Tyrone Power and Gene Crane. Di? Well, Wendell, I'd... I just want to say hello again to my many friends throughout the country. It's good to be home and at work, believe me. Next month, we start shooting Daryl F. Zanuck's production of The Razor's Edge. But it's the other members of our splendid radio production this morning Gene Crane and I want to speak about now. Right, Gene? Right, Ty. I think the special musical score Alfred Newman composed and conducted was masterful, truly inspiring. Now, I know you join me in saying thanks to the magnificent supporting cast, to Milton Geiger, who wrote the splendid radio adaptation of Seventh Heaven, and to our producer, Robert L. Redd, who has charge of the entire production. Yes, Gene, and I'm sure that next Sunday at this same time, our listeners will want to plan to be by their radio sets again to hear Gene Tierney, William Ith, and Clifton Webb in the Hollywood Star Time production of Laura. Goodbye for now, and we'll be seeing you. This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.